Hello and welcome to what is designed to be a shorter video each Tuesday compared to the longer Friday video, but it's turning out to be basically the same length. Anyway, moving on. It's about our heat pump and how we schedule it and run it and have done over the winter to maintain the temperature in our house. It's a question that crops up quite a bit in our other videos and although it's very similar in terms of how you operate it, there are a few differences. So anyway, this is how we've timed and scheduled everything. Doesn't mean that it'll be suitable for you. This is what works for us. And of course, like anything, it's getting tweaked over time. Heat pumps aren't for everybody. They're too expensive at the moment. They, if done right, will cost less to run. They are for us, but we have other things like solar and home battery in play. So this video isn't trying to say heat pumps are for everyone. They're not. Some houses don't suit them. Again, very expensive. And until they come down, there's simply not going to be an option for people. That's not what I'm here to, to change. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just saying for those that are looking into their own research for a heat pump, this is how we've set it up. There's a bit of a perception out there, or should I say misconception, that heat pumps have to run all the time to maintain the temperature of a house, and this is simply not true. You'd run a gas central heating on demand boiler through radiators at a temperature of like 55 or 60 degrees. Some are higher, some are lower, but I would say 60 is probably the average. Certainly, it's what British Gas always left. It's set to after they've um, give the boiler a service, for example. The radiators would dump a lot of heat in the house, get the house up to temperature, and then essentially switch off until the temperature dropped again and then you get another load of heat dumped into the house you know, boom quite quick quite fast a lot of it in one go you get a lot of heat and then no heat and then a lot of heat and then no heat with the heat pump you could do the same thing if you wanted to you could absolutely run it at 60 degrees the one i've got can go up to 75 which let's face it if i touch the radiator it would probably burn my hand so you can operate it if you wanted to the, the exact same way, but that will be far less efficient. I've noticed a greater gap between running a heat pump efficiently and inefficiently compared to a gas central heating boiler. If the temperature outside is 10 degrees and I've got my floor temperature of 40, then there's a difference of 30 degrees. If the floor temperature was 50 degrees, then the gap between the outside temperature where the heat pump gets its heat from and the one I'm calling for would be greater. The heat pump would have to work harder and it would use more energy, it would work less efficiently. So the lower the floor temperature, the closer that will be to the outside temperature. And the closer that is, the more efficient the heat pump will run. Which is why people choose. Okay, You don't have to run it all day, you choose to run it all day. Or at least thereabouts, I'll come to what we do in a second. What it does is trickle the heat into the house so it maintains the temperature. We've noticed, certainly in the much colder months where it's on for a lot more, it's just warm all the time, are the radiators. So warm to touch, not hot, just warm. And yet we're still comfortable, we're still nice and warm because the same amount of heat is coming from those radiators. You can have a lot in one go or a little bit over a longer period of time. That's why underfloor heating makes a lot of sense with a heat pump because it's like a massive radiator. You can have the floor temperature even lower. You don't have to have underfloor heating. You don't have to hyper-insulate your house. Ours is exactly the same as it was before we got the heat pump in terms of insulation. One side effect of having a lower temperature radiator system that I've noticed anyway is that if you go away for several days then the house will cool down of course. That means it will take longer to heat the house back up again because the radiator is at a lower temperature. This is easily negated by getting my phone and turning the heating on in the morning if we're getting back in the late afternoon or evening for example so it comes on early so it's got more time to warm it up one analogy which sort of works in my head but might not be the best between a gas central heat boiler how it typically operates not how it can but how it typically does versus a heat pump is imagine you're doing a i don't know a 10 mile journey in a car with the gas central heating car you're effectively putting your foot down maxing out the speed going until you hit the maximum speed and then you're letting off the throttle and letting the car coast until it slows right down and then going way back up to the top speed again and then waiting for it to coast down. Whereas the heat pump is just basically going 
oh, I'm going to do the speed limit and just gently get there. The car putting his foot down will get there quicker, but ultimately we'll use a lot more fuel, maximum revs and stopping and maximum revs and stopping, than just gently running the car. So, yeah, not the best analogy, but you get my point. Right, I've got the app here. Let me show you how we've set up this whole thing. Let me just start recording. So you can see here, we've got our heating on. It's currently at 19.3 degrees, it's the thermostat. That's in the hall, which is the coldest room in the house. You can see the big temperature at the bottom, 20 degrees. And then if I click on there, this is the schedule for our central heating. The dark green bands that you can see there, so if I click on Monday, are the higher temperatures and the uh, light turquoisey one is the reduced temperature, as this calls it, or the setback temperature. So 17 and a half degrees is our setback temperature. When I haven't told the thermostat to be at, let's say 20 or 21, then that's what it would go back to, 17 and a half. Heat pumps are typically set to just a few degrees in terms of the setback temperature. I presume it's so the house doesn't get really cold over the night and then has to work harder to heat back up again, which will of course, as I said earlier, will take a little bit longer. And something that may be relatively unique to us, our house, how we use this, is that someone is always in the house. My wife works evenings and nights, I work during the day. Again, everyone, everyone's different. Every house is different, every usage pattern is different. What is good for us doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. Now, here, you can see there, it says half past, well, nearly half past two, 2.40 to 6.30 on the left. That is set to 21 degrees. I am on, as many people who watch the channel already know, a time of day tariff. For four hours at night, I have cheap electricity. For the other 20 hours during the rest of the day and night, it's more expensive. The cheap period is at today's prices, I think 12 pence per kilowatt hour. So it's, it's roughly a third cheaper than even the price gap. So I want to hammer that cheap period as much as possible both with the hot water, which I'll come to in a minute, and the heating. So typically, I probably wouldn't have set a nighttime temperature of 21 between half past two and half past six. But because I have very, very cheap fuel, essentially, for those four hours, I'm like, you know what? Get your fill, heat the house up, get some more heat into the house. So when it comes to eight o'clock, when the house is told to get back up to 20 degrees, it doesn't have to get back to 20 degrees. It's already probably past that. So even though this is set to 20 degrees at eight o'clock, as you can just about see there, that doesn't mean that the heating comes back on at eight. It will only come back on if the temperature is below 20 degrees. The rest of the day, so between 8 a.m. and 10 o'clock at night, it's essentially just 20 degrees. Now we have Tado thermostats on most of our radiators. Their only purpose now, we've got the heat pump, is to stop a room from overheating. So the bedrooms, if it gets to a temperature where we're uncomfortable at, at night or before you get to bed, they will turn the radiators off. So the rest of the house will get warm, but the radiators in the rooms will shut off if necessary. It would probably just be at the setback temperature all night until late in the morning if that four hours, that cheap 10, 12 pence per kilo hour didn't exist. Hot water now. This is very different from what we had before, because before we had a gas centrally on-demand boiler. Now we have a water cylinder, a tank. So that heats the hot water up, all in one go, and then you've got that hot water store, in our case, to use all throughout the day, the 24 hours, until the next night when it fills it up again. The reason why, as you can see here, from that small little block, that I do this is because that's, again, the cheap period. That's when electricity is a third of the price as every other time during the day for me. So between, well, in this case, half three and half six, because it doesn't need that long, that's when I get my hot water to heat up to 51 degrees. All of our hot water is done in that four hour window, which means all of our hot water, barring a few things I'll mention in a second, is at 12 pence per kilowatt hour. Or if I go to Octopus Intelligent, 10 pence over six hours. So that, coupled with the fact that the hot water is typically running between 280 and 350% efficiency, means it's considerably, considerably, considerably cheaper for us to heat our hot water up compared to the gas central heating boiler we had before. Now, of course, what would you do if we ran out of hot water? Well, you could just 
basically press this button here, give us a second, hot water boost. And then that would, well, boost the hot water. <laughs> oh, my system was updated. What, what great timing. I'm not filming anything at all, so. Uh, yeah, so if we ever run out of hot water, I just press that button, and depending on how much we've used, of course, it will fill it back up again. Take anywhere from, I would say, 15, 20 minutes to 40 minutes, again, depending on how empty it was before. So that's all you would have to do. You know, if we get people visiting and there's a higher demand for hot water, then I'd usually just press the boost button. So that's essentially it. As far as my family are concerned, we just set it to 20 degrees and leave it to it, and it just gets on with it. In our case, as I've said earlier, we have things which make the heat pump considerably cheaper to run for us. But we spent a lot of money to do this, so I'm not saying anybody can just go out there and get it. We have solar panels, which help a bit, but not much at this time of year. But crucially, a home battery. That charges up in that four hour window as well. And then that powers the heat pump for as long as it can during the day. Which means even if we're using, well, we have to use the heat pump during the day, especially when it's really cold, then at least a good portion of that comes from the battery, therefore it comes from that cheap nighttime period. That's why it's a lot cheaper for us to run compared to the gas boiler. If you're wanting to know, inevitably, it will be in the comment section, how much it's cost us to run this over winter, then that will be coming up over the next few weeks, once winter's finished. We're not quite to the end of February yet, so once I've got those three months, absolutely, I'll be telling you how much it's cost us, what the efficiency has been, and so forth. So there we go, that's effectively it. We say what temperature we want, it gives us that temperature, and the hot water is the same. Any questions, any tips? Because I am still tweaking this thing, any tips? Have you got a heat pump? What have you learned? What have you found out after having them for a year or two or three? If you know someone that's got a heat pump, remember they're like smartphones, they're getting better and better. Don't look at the iPhone 1 and think, well these smartphones aren't gonna work. In the same way you wouldn't look at a 10 year old heat pump and think that that's how they are now. So anyway, yeah, thank you for watching guys. I'll see you soon.